What up, what up, what up? Welcome to a giant's world. Oh yes, it's a giant world, everybody. And I am so appreciative today of our New York Giant Giants ownership, you know, of the job that they did with addressing its fans, the public. I am enthused that our owners are feeling the way we are feeling. You know, they are feeling the way we're feeling. And not only that, they are answering the bell. Not only that, they are putting it out there, letting you know, listen, this is the way I feel. Answered all questions, in my opinion, that needed to be answered. We had so many questions that needed to be answered. And I feel like John Mera gave us what we all wanted. And that was honest, honest answers coming from the New York Giants ownership. And I thank John Mara for this press conference in which he had. And he released to the fans how he truly feels inside. So I'm glad it wasn't like a broken record. It wasn't your cliche answers. It was honest, direct answers. And I feel like it was a great, great thing moving forward for the New York Giants, the fans, and ownership. Okay? And I'm glad that John Mara has decided to enter a place of realization knowing that he has to address his fans. It's like his fans were distraught, torn up, outraged. I guarantee you, and I knew what I was talking about. If you check my other videos, John Mara has never felt this before. He actually alluded to this. He let it be known that this was the first time that he's been at this point with the New York Giants. This is his lowest point that he's ever been. So I'm going to play the press conference. I'm going to play a bit of it, and I want you to let me know what you think. I'm going to be giving you my opinions all throughout it. Okay. Events that have taken place over the last couple of days that uh, I ought to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. So let's get right into it and uh, get started. Respect, NBC. John, you made two big changes this week, changes again. Why should Giants fans believe you will get it right this time? Well, I haven't given him any reason to believe that, uh, Bruce. It's up to me um, to make the right choices, up to Steve and I to make the right choices going forward to earn back their trust. And that is not going to be an overnight process. That's going to take, uh, that's going to take some time. But it starts with getting uh, the general manager pick uh, done uh, correctly and then with hiring the right head coach. So that's going to be a process that we're going to have to, we're going to, have to earn their trust again. And, uh, as I said, that's not going to happen overnight. I'm Rob, Newsday. John, how much do you look at these interviews for general managers and head coaches as, as package deals, as, as bringing one guy in with, with his coach? Uh, there are no package deals. I mean, each uh, I, I, we want to get the general manager ideally done first. And obviously, we'll talk about um, the candidates uh, for head coach. But uh, there's, it's not going to be a package deal. I want to go through a... Uh, a, a complete process here, interview as many people as possible. I don't want to rush into anything. We've made that mistake in, in the past, and I want to make sure we get to see as many candidates uh, as possible, ideally. Art Stapleton, the record. John, do you feel like you guys have made bad choices and you've identified wrong candidates, or in some ways is this a failure of your process that you've gone through? It's probably, um, probably all of the above, Art. I mean, uh, we haven't necessarily made the right choices. Um, I think um, looking back on our process, I wish it had been a little more extensive, that we had seen more people um, and going forward to earn back their trust. And that is not going to be an overnight process. That's going to take, uh, that's going to take some time. But it starts with getting uh, the general manager pick uh, done uh, correctly and then with hiring the right head coach. So that's going to be a process that we're going to have to we're going to have to earn their trust again. And 
uh, as I said, that's not going to happen overnight. You know what? I like what Mera is doing because, I, I mean, really, I, I have yet to see a owner come out and say, listen, I messed up. We all messed up with our process and our program in the past. However, I am committed to writing the ship and gaining the fans trust back and gaining the confidence back in ownership and our leadership here as the New York Giants football team. I'm so glad that he's letting us know, listen, we are committed to this. We messed up before. It was kind of quick, a quick process before. We regret it, but we are thoroughly going to do our due diligence this time around. However, it's not going to be an overnight thing. And he's letting us know that straight up, and I can only respect that. You let me know what you think. John, how much do you look at these interviews for general managers and head coaches as, as package deals, as, as bringing one guy in with, with his coach? Uh, there are no package deals. I mean, each... Uh, we want to get the general manager ideally done first, and obviously we'll talk about um, the candidates uh, for a head coach, but uh, there's, it's not going to be a package deal. I want to go through a, uh, a, a complete process here, interview as many people as possible. I don't want to rush into anything. We've made that mistake in the past, and I want to make sure we get to see as many candidates uh, as possible, ideally. Mark Stapleton, the record. John, do you feel like you guys have made bad choices and you've identified wrong candidates? Or in some ways, is this a failure of your process that you've gone through? It's probably um, probably all of the above, Art. I mean, uh, we haven't necessarily made the right choices. Um, I think um, looking back on our process, I wish it had been a little more extensive, that we had seen more people. ...to make the right choice. Um, you know, a lot of these choices the last few years have not been um, proven to be successful. So, um, you, know, you, you know, everything starts and stops with you. You know, do you feel you're capable of making the right choice this time around? I, I do, Paul, and obviously I don't expect <laughs> a lot of people to believe that given what's happened over the last few years and I'm going to have to earn uh, their trust again. But I, I feel very good about the group of candidates for the general manager position that we have scheduled right now. Um, I think any one of a number of them could would make an excellent general manager. So I, I am confident that, that we have the resources to make the right choice here. Bob Glauber, Newsday. John, I'm just curious your reaction to um, being in your building uh, watching the Cowboys game where a lot of Cowboys fans showed up. And then against Washington, not a lot of fans showed up, period. How much did that impact you? And as a, as a kind of a corollary, you said, you, you know, you, you rushed it a little bit last time. Do you think that there was a little bit of comfort in that it had been so long since there was a succession of front office stability since 1979? Okay, that's the way to get two questions in there, Bob, in violation yes, of the it rules. Is. But okay. Um, obviously, you don't like to see visiting team fans in, in your building, but that's just the way the NFL is. Right now, we had a lot of fans in Miami, a lot of fans in Tampa. Now, certainly it's exacerbated by the fact that we had a poor record this year, but it, certainly it's not a pleasant sight that you, that you want to see every time. And, and, and yes, we've gone through this process far too often in recent years after having a lot of years of stability, and it's not a fun process uh, at all. Um, there is nothing more painful to me uh, than making that long walk down the hallway uh, to tell somebody uh, particularly a, a, a good person uh, like Joe, um, that uh, we're making a change. It's gut-wrenching for me. Um, it's been gut-wrenching every time I've had to do it. And um, obviously, I've had to do it far too often. The funny thing is, I believe Mera. I believe that it's gut-wrenching to him to take that long walk to release somebody from their duties. And I totally agree with Mara when basically, uh, you know, understanding that there's a problem and the problem has to be addressed. Like you said, it's happened far too many times. But, um, you know, things had to be done. I don't know 
why he did it to Tom Coughlin, that is totally beyond me. But hey, things happen. And um, I just hope that they can get this right. And I know you hope so as well. The viewers listening to this. So let's listen to John. Uh, lately, and, and that's why we're um, that's why we're in this uh, process again, and um, we're going to get it right this time. Nico Jones, NFL Network. Hey, John, I I'm curious if there was a last straw for Joe Judge, and where, if anywhere, does that 11-minute address, where, as you well know, you know, he took some, you know, veiled shots at at your former coach and and also a a, a division opponent, obviously. I mean, obviously, I wasn't thrilled with that uh, particular press conference, but I can't say there was one specific uh, act that was the last straw. It was just the culmination of things. Um, uh, we, we just got to a point where I, I, where I thought we had dug ourselves a hole so deep that I didn't see a clear path to getting out of it unless we completely blew it up and, and started all over again with a new general manager and a new head coach. Um, I still think that there is a really good head coach inside of Joe Judge. I just felt like given where we are right now uh, on the verge of bringing in a new general manager, we have to give that person um, the flexibility uh, to bring in the head coach that, that he wants. And I, I think that's, that was a large part of the decision here in, in, making a, in making a change. I just felt like we really needed to just start from the, from, from the ground up again. I wholeheartedly believe him again. And I also am thankful to the actual reporter who just asked that particular question because I'm glad that John Mara did not do the political tap dance around the question. He took it head on and he answered it, in my opinion, genuinely. And I do believe that it was a combination of things that led the Maras and the Tish family to this ultimate decision. Um, you know, I think that if you would have went further with Joe Judge, I mean, the minute he lost next season, I mean, the fans would have erupted. And the fans now have the power and leverage over basically the media because, you know, they can get right on plenty of social media circuits and blast off. They do not have to wait for the beat writers. They do not have to wait for NFL insiders to give their insight. They do not have to wait for any of these reporters any longer. They can get right on and speak as one voice all through these circle, uh, social media circuits. And I'm glad that John answered that head on. And it was a great answer, if you ask me. Thank you. I'm Kevin, AP. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, Tom, how are you? Good. It seemed when you hired Joe, he came in and gave you a, you know, presentation which wowed you. I mean, in 2020 hindsight, do you need to take a step back after you listen to these guys and look at more closely what they're saying? Well, I think that's a fair comment, but we did here. We did a lot of research on him, as we do with all of our candidates. Um, you know, he did. He did do an excellent job in that interview. Um, sometimes, you know, some people interview well, some people don't, but you have to do more research than that. But I, I thought our process at that time was, was pretty thorough. I mean, you know, we had spoken to a number of people about Joe. And listen, I still believe that there is a good head coach inside of him. Um, but uh, I just felt like given where we are at the, at the moment, and certainly, certainly, that is not all due to, to, to him. Uh, but given where we are right now, I felt like we needed a clean sweep. Thank you. Ian O'Connor, you are close. Hey, John, for, for those of us old enough to remember, the back-to-back the -back quarterback sneak sort of brought back the memories of the Bizarchik fumble and 
in that period of time, which obviously is not a pleasant memory for you, but did that sequence really make this situation as far as bringing him back completely untenable? How much did that play into it? Uh, you know, obviously those weren't my favorite play calls in the world. I wish we had run that back when Pisarczyk uh, was here. But, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, Ian, that, that, was, that was just one minor factor in the overall scheme of things. Obviously not what I was looking for uh, watching the game, but, you know, you can point to any number of play calls that uh, – that, uh, that any of us uh, could have second-guessed, but uh, it was a bit of a surprise to me, let's put it that way. I love the fact that Mara just admitted that there were a number of play calls that left him scratching his head that were questionable. And if Mara seen it, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody in the front office was like, huh? At a lot of the plays that were being called that were just like, huh, what are you doing down there on the field? I mean, you had YouTubers going irate. They were going berserk over calls that Joe Judge was making, and they were going irate after the game, okay? (laughs) You You even had analysts commentators that you know like ESPN what have you first take uh you know what have you uh you know all of them type shows though you had them analysts getting on there going berserk as if they were YouTubers you had analysts saying Joe Judge is lying you know they were <laughs> they're not even Giants fans they were so they felt so disrespected <laughs> Just, uh, let me know what y'all think yeah, and Doug, the athletic agent on, you know, as you referenced, you know, fired a lot of people over the last couple of years. Um, but what do you say to the fact that your brother is still senior vice president of player personnel, your nephew's co-director of player personnel, and there's a perception that there isn't really accountability for family members who have had prominent roles during this stretch? Well, that perception uh, has been created by you and others, and the reality is that um, in terms of my brother, my brother spends most of his time doing evaluation of college players. His grades go into our system, and he participates in the draft. Um, All personnel decisions in this building, and this has always been the case, have been made by the general manager and the head coach. When they agree on a personnel decision, they come to me with it, and as long as they're both in agreement, I okay it. The only times I I would possibly not do that is if there was an off-the-field conduct issue. So uh, Chris is a very skilled evaluator, but he does not have any authority here other than the fact that I will go to him on occasion and ask him about players. Tim is probably the most respected guy we have in this building. Coaches, uh, front office staff, uh, the general manager, go to him, ask his advice on players because he is a good evaluator. He's worked his way up from the bottom and he's earned his stripes. He does not have any authority here. The personnel decisions have always been made and will always be made by the general manager and the head coach. If they agree on on a draft pick, on a UFA, uh, then I'm going to okay it 99.99% of the time. Uh, The only time I will raise an issue about it is if there is a conduct issue. I'll question them about it. I'll make them defend their positions, and I'll make sure that they're on the same page. But at the end of the day, if they're in agreement, then that's the decision we're going with. Look at the successful teams. Uh, at, at what they're doing. I have a lot of people around the league that I, that I talk to whose opinions uh, that I respect. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, Steve and I put together the list. Steve Politti, NJ.com. Hey, John, I'm curious, is this your lowest moment in your associated station with the Giants? I mean, is, this, is this as embarrassed as you've been about the franchise? Honestly, I would have to say yes. Yes, it is. Um, I kept thinking during the season that uh, we had hit rock bottom, and then he, uh, personnel around the league. It's I, I always keep a list um, of possible head coaches, possible uh, general managers. I look at it. I look at the successful teams, uh, at at what they're doing. I have a lot of people around the league that I that I talk to whose opinions uh, that I respect. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, Steve and I put together the list. Steve Politti, NJ.com. 
Hey, John, I'm curious, is this your lowest moment in your associated speech with the Giants? I mean, is this, is this as embarrassed as you've been about the franchise? Honestly, I would have to say yes. Yes, it is. Um, I kept thinking during the season that uh, we had hit rock bottom and then each week it got a little worse. So, uh, honestly, I, I'm not proud of saying this, but if I'm going to be 100% honest, I would have to say the answer is yes. There you go. He felt like he has hit rock bottom. This is the lowest point that he's been in since he's been in position of being the owner of the New York Giants. And wow, I don't I don't think I don't know no owner who would come out and admit that, man. I mean like Man, that's New York real, though, man. You know, New York is so real. You know, I love it, man. I love it, man. And um, I love, uh, you know, what's going on with ownership. And I'm so glad that we have the owners that we do have. So many owners in the league are totally in the shadows. They're trillionaires and don't give a dog and won't give you utter a word to you. And if they do utter a word to you, it's a... It's a word of narcissism and defiance and uh, never humble. And Mara came off to me as humble. You know, he didn't even have to do what he's done, what he was just saying. He didn't have to do that. He could have issued a simple statement and boom, that's it. He could have if he wanted to, you know, but he could have issued a statement. He didn't even have to issue a statement. He could have just went on with the GM search and the coach search and got the team back on track, and then boom. He didn't have to say a word, but I am very, very excited that he humbled himself. Ownership humbled themselves, and they spoke on behalf of the New York Giants speaking to its fans. And uh, I appreciate this franchise. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think Mera did a good job by coming on to all of these platforms, speaking, expressing himself to his fans, to the franchise's fans? Do you think he did a good job? If you think Mera did a good job, drop a one in the comment section below. So that I'll know that you definitely think Mera did a good job in keeping his fans informed on what is going on. On the scenes and behind the scenes. Thank you all for your time. I love you all, except for the ones that don't. Peace. It's a giant world, baby.